Thank you. You know, as chairman of this committee, and I think on behalf of the committee, we're working on behalf of the lives lost, lost or severely damaged in America and across the globe by a deadly virus, a virus that should have united our country, but instead divided our nation and the world. I've said since the beginning, this is an after action review for lessons to be learned so that we can provide a path forward. But we have to review the previous actions or we learn no lessons. I feel, and I'm talking to Dr. Gary for a moment beforehand, we can do better. And we have to do better going forward. This process that we have been through as a nation is not it. As a nation, as a world, is not it. And we can lead the way of doing better. You know, our staff report that's been out investigates our government processes, exploring how decisions were or are made, revealing statements made in the process, such as those behind me here, statements made by those involved directly or indirectly. Yeah, we're exploring a potential cover-up. That is what we are doing. It's exploring. That requires investigation. To both of you, you receive federal dollars. We appropriate those. Congress appropriates those federal dollars. We have a responsibility of oversight on behalf of our constituents and the very taxpayers that pay you. Sorry about that, but it's our job, whether you like it or not, and I take it seriously. We have discovered things like statements by Dr. Morins, who works for NIAID. Send things to my Gmail. I'm getting FOIA'd all the time. You, you both know what FOIA'd means, correct? Freedom of Information Act. Okay. Send things to my Gmail. And I'll delete anything I don't want the New York Times to see. And then he criticizes reporters and scientists like Dr. Metzl and others, calls them names that I won't repeat. And aren't we proud? Aren't we proud? Now, because of these revelations that we've uncovered, NARA, the National Archives Record Administration, is leading an investigation on Dr. Morins and his behavior. That is our responsibility as Congress. So you may call it going down a rabbit hole and trying to find vendettas, or somebody here might, but I do have a vendetta against dishonesty. And as a doctor, I have, I, I'm against politically, politically motivated science, which Dr. Anderson, you yourself, said we had to. You hate to go down, let me see if I can find the quote, but you hate to go down a political path, but you had to, and I'm paraphrasing there. You know, in the staff reports that have come out, the minorities today, talking about political, our report zero times mentions Republicans or Democrats. Zero times. Their report mentions Republicans or Democrats 38 times. Who's being political? Who's being political? And when Dr. Collins sends an email to Dr. Fauci on April 15th saying, do more to squash the lab leak, which essentially is halting scientific debate, and Dr. Fauci goes out on the White House lawn the next day quoting proximal origins, saying this came from nature, as if definitive. I want to know why. I want to know why that is. I'm a physician. I've served in public health. Science has always fascinated me. We ask why. We ask how. Dr. Gary, 
think I have your quote here. Where you cite, uh, I'll, I'll put it in quotes, the finding of SARS-CoV-like coronaviruses from pangolins with nearly identical RBDs, however, provides a much stronger and more parsimonious explanation of how SARS-CoV-2 acquired these recombination or, re, via recombination or mutation. I get that. I can, I can see where, where you came up with that and wanted to, to know about that. But, as we've heard today, and we've had testimony before, there were no pangolin viruses at the wet market, or pangolins. They're 603 miles away. No evidence of a bat either. Yet, ODNI reports potentially epidemic viruses from pan pangolin samples are at the WIV and have been since 2019. That's not 603 miles away. I recognize the dangers of a wet market. I recognize the dangers of gain-of-function research. Dr. Fauci was asked to recognize that in an article I read from 2012 in, I think, Weekend Australia. Dr. Fauci, on this gain-of-function research, I'm paraphrasing here, so forgive me. He said, aren't, aren't you concerned? that doing something like this might get out of a lab and create a pandemic? And his response was basically that the benefits outweigh the risks. Well, if this came from a lab, I certainly don't see how the benefits outweigh the risk. In 2005, our own State Department talked about publicly how China, is researching bioweapons. In 2015, they even published a book related to genetic bioweapons. I'm a soldier. I sit on the Intelligence Committee. I'm sorry. That matters to me. And it's not to be taken lightly. And when I look at some of the things, you know, I hear like uh, things said, yeah, certain intelligence agencies said low confidence, it can, but it came from nature, and others said it came from the lab. Well, I'm a physician that sits on the Intelligence Committee, and I've been looking at this since, 20, since it came out, the very beginning. And when it comes to what the Intelligence Committee came up with, that 90-day commission, I want to know who they talk to, because it matters. And I'll get into that in a minute. This is looking at everything, not spouting about Republicans or Democrats. This is looking to what happened and what happened to this world and how did it happen, and let's have a scientific debate. And when Dr. Collins suggests to Dr. Fauci that we squash one of the theories, that is stopping the debate. And that concerns me because we pay them. And I want to know why they wanted to do that. That's not a vendetta. That's fair. It was important that the Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic hear directly from the authors of Proxima Origin. Hear from you to better understand how it was drafted and published and who was involved with this process. And I thank you for your transcribed interviews and I thank you for being here today. I have no personal preference as to whether COVID-19 came from a lab or if it came from nature. In fact, in many ways, I wish it came from nature. We could prove that. I would feel a whole lot better than feeling something this deadly, this lethal is being made in a lab or held at a lab. But I do care deeply also about gathering as much information as possible so we can learn from the COVID-19 pandemic so we can prevent one in the future. I do care if science is tainted by politics. As the Proxima Origin authors wrote in their own emails, I didn't write that. We heard today that there are some in the intelligence community who have confidence that COVID-19 came from nature. 
But if those intelligence officials only spoke to those <clears throat> with views held by the proximal origin authors, then they haven't gathered all available evidence, have they? <clears throat> I'm looking into that, and I have some impressions already, having the opportunity to sit on the Intelligence Committee and get some of those answers. And I will tell you, my impression, and this is an opinion and an impression of what I have seen, the FBI did more work than the others, in my opinion. Department of Energy has more scientists than any other agency. They have the national labs. Just so happens, those are two entities that think this came from the lab, and that should be respected. The Select Me has gathered and continues to investigate information relating to the origins of COVID-19. The House and Senate unanimously passed a bill which the President signed to declassify intelligence relating to origins because it is that important for Americans to have all available facts and data on a pandemic that affected every single one of us. And in some ways, I feel the Intelligence Committee in the House of Representatives has done more digging than the intelligence community. And that's important. And I want you to know what we know. Because I worry when people don't know what they don't know, but speak with authority. The select has continues to investigate this information. We passed that bill, but OD and I violated the law with the report that they produced. I expected hundreds of pages. You probably have hundreds of pages, research, other things. I certainly do. I expected hundreds of pages, and I expected answers to questions that Americans and those on this select have asked, such as to who did the intelligence agency speak to in order to draw their conclusions. I think that's important, but we don't know that. I have some idea because the Director of National Intelligence is cooperating and trying to provide me with as much information as I can get. What type of scientists, doctors, or experts did they work with to reach the answers that we have received so far? See, transparency is non-negotiable here. Honesty is non-negotiable as well. In this case, lives depend on it. Americans should be competent in the conclusions reached, but in order for them to be competent, they must be provided with facts. Gathering information and uncovering evidence is not a threat to science, it actually improves science. Calling those who believe in the plausibility of a lab leak conspiracy theorists does not lend credibility to vigorous scientific debate before pro producing a conclusion. In fact, it gives the appearance that the zoonotic theory was not only not rigorously tested, but that proximal origin was based on preconceived notions and that evidence to the contrary was stifled. Grin as you may, Dr. Anderson, grin as you may. As to the involvement of NIH in the proximal origin, we learned important information today with respect to the influence exerted by Drs. Collins and Fauci. We know that Drs. Fauci and Collins prompted the origins paper, and seemingly, maybe Dr. Farrar as well. We can get to the bottom of that. We know that the February 5th, 2020 draft sent to Drs. Fauci and Collins was used in, used in the published Proximal Origin paper because portions of that draft appear verbatim in what Nature published. We have the email from Dr. Anderson specifically thanking Drs. Fauci and Collins for their advice and leadership as we have been working through the SARS-CoV-2 origins paper. You wrote that, Dr. Anderson. Not me. And before it was finalized, Dr. Anderson sent an email to Drs. Fauci and Collins to ask if they had any comments, suggestions, or questions about the paper. That, to me, is pretty inclusive about the paper at all. Dr. Anderson has raised the point that there is substance difference between about the paper as opposed to on the paper. But are we expected to believe this email was not a solicitation to provide input with respect to the substance of the paper on a paper 
they prompted. Prompting's not my word. Anderson's own words clearly demonstrate the close coordination that occurred from the inception of Proximal Origin to its publication between the authors and NIH leadership. We too want to take a complete look at all the facts, something that was not done when Proximal Origin was published. We covered the reasons and motivations as to why debate and discourse were stifled today. If the breadcrumbs of the origin of COVID-19 lead us directly to the doorstep of a single wet market in central China, then we should start there and work backwards, smartly. Large portions of the intel community, however, numerous experts and the evidence gathered indicate confidence that the virus originated from a lab. Human-to-human -human transmission has been proven to be highly contagious, and we still haven't found the alleged animal that started it all. But many people have died. And that's why we brought the authors of Proximal Origins here today, on behalf of all those that have died or suffered otherwise, or the unintentional consequences of lockdowns, school closures, etc. But many Americans have lost loved ones. Millions across the globe have suffered from this pandemic. And we need to find out how COVID-19 originated so that we can prepare for a future pandemic. I believe that's in your hearts. But I don't think the process is right. We need to do this so that we make sure we base decisions off of sound science. We don't have the luxury during a pandemic to protect feelings or push preferred narratives or play politics. We have a duty to find the truth and to push forward. In closing, I do, I do truly want to thank our panelists once again for their important and insightful testimony. But with that, without objection, all members will have five legislative days within which to submit materials and to submit additional written questions for the witnesses, which will be forwarded to the witnesses for their response. If there's no further business, without objection, the select subcommittee stands adjourned.